can remove yourself from your business and your business continues to function, you're an entrepreneur. If you can't remove yourself from the business and the business crashes, you are the center of your business, you are self-employed. Um, but before I get into it, I just wanted to thank uh, Leah Cafe for the evening and the food has been amazing. So if you could just clap hands for them for that. Sweet. Um, so how many people here have a business or are, gonna, are planning to start a business, that sort of thing, have that entrepreneurial type vibe? Can you just put your hands up? Okay, that's awesome. All right, so a lot of people identify with what I'm talking about. All right, so <laughs> just to get that out the way. All right, so I'm from Zimbabwe, um, a little country in Africa, just above South Africa. And um, I'm a creative, I do graphic design, digital design, and content creation strategies. Zimbabwe is, as known, is a pretty tough place to grow up in. It's a bit hectic there. It's not the simplest life. Uh, we've had times where, uh, how do I imagine winners, all the winners supermarkets as the only supermarket in the country. You go to the supermarket and there's nothing in the supermarket but like popcorn and sweets. And you are forced to go into another country to buy your groceries and bring them back. And even that on its own became a thing because now there's no cash, so there's no fuel, and it's a whole survival. But um, that brought to me a sort of unmisswithableness. It's like a word I made up. That created almost like a force field around my, my thinking, my mental. I wasn't affected by too many negative things that I go through and things like that because of the history of the upbringing I had. I came here to Mauritius in 2014 and I studied at Curtin. And before that, I didn't like school. Um, <laughs> it's not that I don't, I, I don't like school, but I like education. The difference is, at school, I'm forced to do a whole bunch of things that I don't actually you know, enjoy, whereas when I got to university, I could pick what I wanted to do. And um, I started working the day, uh, the week I got into Mauritius in 2014. And I remember my first interview, I went in, got to the place, and I didn't have a laptop. I had never done anything in the industry, so I had no work to show or anything of that sort. And, uh, but I had a lot of ideas. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go and hope these ideas get me something. And so I went for the interview, the guy's like, okay, cool. Um, do you have, you know, do you have any equipment with you? Like, no. Do you have any work experience? Like, no. Like, do you know how to use the software? No. And then it went like that. It's terrible interview. But um, after some time, I learned more work. Um, I'm just starting out in the career, and I just want a job to work under somebody who can teach me, and I'll do it for free. And so I got the job. And then after him, as I learned stuff at university, I preferred to explore further than the assignments, so I'd go and you know reapply somewhere else, and I do the exact same thing. Do you have a computer? I do now. Do you have this? No. Are you good at that? No. And eventually, I get the job because I was going to do it for free. Because for me, the compensation was learning through the journey. And so I worked at different agencies doing that, and um, eventually, one of the agencies offered me. Um, they pulled me out and offered to pay me, and then that began that. But I was still studying at the time, so it was part time, and I started to post a lot of the work I would do online. This would bring me a whole bunch of clients from, from just, they'll just contact me, how can you create this for me, etc. And, and so this started to happen, but now I had university, I had my job, and I had this freelance thing going on. And it was too much to handle, and I'm not used to that kind of pressure. And so I started to give off work to my classmates. And so how I would do it is they would come and they'll pay, let's just say the thing costs $20. So they'll come, hey, okay, can you do this for me, 20 bucks? I'm like, okay, great, I'll go to my classmates and I'll find somebody who'll do it for 10. And then I'll sell the job to my client, he'd do it for 10, bring it back to me, I take it to the client um, for 20. And then he's happy he got his 10, I got my 10, and he got his product, so we're good. Eventually this grew, and I decided to start an agency I just called it an agency, but it wasn't registered or anything like that. It was just with friends who were making money. It was fun. So, <laughs> so we started this thing, and we called it Instant Creatives, and it took off. I had departments. It was crazy. So, um, but the, and then I graduated. But the thing I didn't take into account, um, which often happens in this whole entrepreneurship journey, like you think you're fine, especially when it's fine. Actually, when it's fine, something's wrong. <laughs> so you think it's fine, and then all of a sudden, um, everybody graduates and I'm not paying them, they just um, subcontracted. 
So they all go on to work at these different agencies and stuff. I'm working too. And so the whole team in like a month, gone. <laughs> all the failures kind of become stepping stones towards those wins. So if, you look, if you're working on a ratio of three losses equals one win, Every time you win, you're that much closer to a loss. I mean, every time you lose, you're that much closer to a win. <laughs> After some time, and then um, I hadn't been creating things I wanted to create, that sort of thing. And as a creative, that puts you in a bit of a stressful space because you just want to let things out. You want to make things. You, you have all these ideas. You can't sleep at night. You've got to get it out. And, and I didn't have the outlet to do it. And so I decided to start. Uh, what I'm running today, which is Timothy Designs, I created an agency under my name, and we basically do like branding, content creation, and content strategies, so digital strategies and things like that. Um, we run the whole thing based on business results mainly. So we like, for example, a normal conversation would be we sit with the client, discuss what their business goals are, long term, short term, and see where the green is digitally, and then how we can get to that point. And if there's anything we can't do within our team, um, we subcontract that out to other people. The whole idea is to bring value to or to achieve our client's major business goal. Like we think of the customer first and everything happens around the cell phone. That's pretty much how we work. Um, so, yeah, so I started that. And in the beginning of it, I, I thought I was like an entrepreneur and, and running this whole thing. I, I am an entrepreneur by nature, but I thought I was doing entrepreneurship. And then I realized, you know, like I was actually just self-employed at the time. Self-employed people and entrepreneurs on the outside look exactly the same. But self-employed people are people who have a, um, how do you call it? They have a talent or that sort of thing that they can offer to the industry but they have to themselves actively go get the job, bring the job home, and they're the ones that do the job at home to supply for the client in order to get the bills paid. That's that's how people can do it. So like graphic designers, dancers, artists, most of the creative stuff is self-employed. Then you have entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs do the exact same thing, except they set up systems to get the job done. They go out, they get the job, they bring it back home, but somebody else is going to do the job. And then they go out again, and, and eventually they don't need to go out anymore because set up a system for that and the sales guy comes in and goes and does that and they set up all these systems so that eventually you have a business if you can remove yourself from your business and your business continues to function you're an entrepreneur if you can't remove yourself from the business and the business crashes you are the center of your business you are self-employed so that hit me because like it's called timothy designs so i was more <laughs> self-employed <laughs> thinking I'm doing entrepreneurship and eventually I'll sink because then I'm just living hand to mouth. So I started working on setting up all these systems to get the job done. And that has helped a lot for me. You can't do stuff on your own, you need a team around you. And so I've, uh, I've, now we've set it up that way and since doing that a lot has, has moved a lot faster. And um, the last thing I, I'd like to say is you know, it's really important to always move forward in this whole entrepreneurship thing. Because there's times where it's going to look like you made a mistake. There's times where other people will tell you you made a mistake. There's times where your mentors will tell you you made a mistake. There's times where rent is due and you're like, okay, I made a mistake. <laughs> but you've got to always keep moving forward. Some days you're going to be sprinting. Other days you're going to be jogging. Some days you're going to just take one step. But in the bigger picture of the whole thing, like that whole admissibleness is the effort of taking that one step. If that's what you do that day, you've moved forward. And um, I'd like to close by a little thing Will Smith said once that caught my attention just to you, in connection with the last point I said of moving forward. He said, if you want to build a perfectly straight, well done wall, that state of the art wall, you don't think of the entire wall. You plan for it, but you don't work for the entire wall. You work for the brick that you're laying in that moment. And you, would, you lay that single brick as perfectly as you can. And then once you're done with that brick, you move on to the next one. You don't look at the brick you just laid and you don't think of the brick you're about to lay. You lay the next brick as perfectly as you can and you keep doing that. And before you know it, you have a perfectly designed wall. So my name is Timothy. That is my talk. And um, yeah, I hope to talk to a lot of you guys after this. Yeah.